job next. Oh, did you find the snackers? What you got? Yeah, okay, we'll start there. Hey, Flockers, we are live with Max and Friends. Goodness. Yeah, it should be live on all of the platforms. Should see us on YouTube, on Facebook. Just, uh, what you looking at, Max? Turn around, honey. You want to see a pretty face? And just hop in where I can see comments. What do you think, Max? Are you a big bird? Oh. Yeah, you are cleaning that off pretty good, aren't you, honey? Let's go to here. Yeah, are you going to help me with the computer, Max? Are you going to help push the button? I bet you'd like to do that. It's not going to happen. Well, yeah, okay. I'm just copying and trying to find some comments. If you are seeing Hi, Jordan. Hi, Angie. All right, we've got a live on Stacy, and it looks like YouTube is streaming too. Just waiting for the comments to pop up for me. Uh, sometimes these things take a minute, don't they, guys? Okay, close that. Hi, Sharon. Super glad to see you. Yeah, people are joining in. Next, uh, uh, uh. Up, up. Please stay up, honey. Please stay up. You stay up. I'll get you a couple of snacks, okay? A couple of birdie snacks. What you got? And we'll make some of your favorites. We'll cook, okay? Hi, Karen. Hi, Kara. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Marion. And Cammy Tango's here. Oh yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. And we have we are live on YouTube as well. I see all the comments. Hi Bookshare. Hi Becky. Oh my goodness. Bird Bob's here. Hi Karen. So good to see everybody. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. You think we should whisper, huh, bud? Okay. Yeah. Did you have a big, big, big week, bud? Did you have a big week? Okay. Oh, it is good to see everybody. Yeah, Max is starting to a little bit of pasta. And I'm going to go scramble and cook some of his favorites. And I think everybody knows what those are. You doing that? Can you hear Mango whistling and happy in the background? No. Mango knows how to whistle really pretty. Oh, Pico, are you telling Mango to whisper? It's a pretty song. It's a very pretty song. <laughs> yeah, that's so pretty, Mango. Yeah, Mango actually had a really good week. Let me tell everybody, while I'm getting a nasty baby story, let me tell everybody about Mango's week. So on Monday, Something really special happened, didn't it, Mango? We got Mango's extra, extra big cage. And this is something uh, yeah, we, we, we uh -huh. were not planning on getting until we had some hot uh -huh. weather. Oh, Max. Let me just make this for you, Max. Yeah? And we got that put together Tuesday night. Which means that the entire house was upset. Everything was moved from ground. Was it that? <laughs> so Mango was super excited too because yes, Mango, you got your.
a bucket. Mango loves playing in a huge plastic bucket. He takes his lost image shred. He pays peekaboo. Peekaboo, Mr. Magoo. <laughs> yes, Mango. Um, Mango's super, super happy about his cage. Did get a little bit territorial about it, but hey, you know what? That's par for the course. You expect stuff like that to happen when you have birds. Mango was so excited to see it coming in. He even wanted to help me put it up. So if you want a funny, funny story. Um, oh, I see a super chat from Kangle. Let me just catch the super chat, then I'm going to tell you a really funny story. Funny from the bird's standpoint, not funny from mine. Kangle says, Max, I missed you last week, but now I'm back with you. I'm good to have veterinarian, and I feel poop in her shoes. Well, that's good, Kangle. you got to be here for the back. And he wants to take good care of you. Right, Max. So, funny story on assembling uh, mango big cage. Now, I'm not stranger to putting together big cages and needed, needed to do a little bit of rearranging uh, to get everything moved. Was not quite expecting all the pieces to arrive on Monday. It was a little quicker than expected, but that was okay. A uh, really nice friend of Val and Charles uh, named Tom. Tom is, you've seen Tom before. He owns Corky, the little tiny Moleccan. Yeah, your friend Corky's dad. So he helps, uh, he's got a large enough vehicle to move the pieces of that cage, so he helped out. Super glad to see him. But needed to move a few things around before I was ready to put things up. And I, I sort of looked, did a little bit of math, and said, right then, I can put this up solo if I lean one, one, one side of the cage against something tall, and there was something really convenient. It was Mango's existing cage. Now, because Mango and everybody wanted to help, and I was moving around big pieces of metal and furniture, I didn't want any birds underfoot, so everybody was told, hey, hang out in the cage while I take care of this. Everything was going great. Just did, ow! bite out of me. That was from the microwave, the door of the microwave when I jumped. That wasn't fun, Max. They got a cool. So so I start putting together the big cage. And I lean one one side of the big cage against Mango's uh, existing smaller cage. And I just I just wheeled it over so everything was convenient. And Mango was super curious and watching. And I've got bolts in one hand. I'm setting up. I'm, get, I'm just getting everything into position. I leaned over and down, and then out of the corner of my eye, I see Mango decide that maybe he could help, and he pushes the big cage with his foot, the the one one standing portion of it, which was kind of wobbly. It was just sort of propped up. Right back, it was propping up. Um. You want your eggs, I know, but they got to cool. They got to cool, cool, cool. So he tried to push it over on my head. I caught it. Um, then I rejigged things and I decided to use a bungee cord to help uh, hold up the side. That looks a little bit better. Mango had so much fun. He thought maybe I can push this again and discovered that the bungee cord was in the way. All good. So I got that put together, got it put up. And Mango just raced right inside and said, this is mine. So Mango's had a really, really good week. He's super excited about it. Has a bit more space. But uh, he's been singing pretty songs, playing peekaboo, racing around, trying to explain to me that that was his cage. Uh, uh, Max, up, up. Max, can we go up, please? And if he didn't want to be catching a food bowl, 
We've had that discussion. He's decided that maybe it's okay if I touch food and water bowl. It's okay if I feed him inside the cage. Whoop, whoop, whoo! What happened, Max? Did you trip? Did you trip? I'm going to go check on your Aggies, Max. Yeah, let's go check on your Aggies, huh? Were you waiting for eggs to go into the So I'm going to offer him a banana and I'm going to make a prediction. He's going to turn his big cup against it. What is the banana? Yeah, he wants the eggies. He saw that there were eggies. Um, next. We went foraging at the grocery store. Got you some more mini cones. I know you like your mini cones. It was so upsetting last week not to have any mini cones, wasn't it, buddy? I know, we ran out. Let's see if we can open this container of mini cones. We got scissors. Oh, it is so tough, Max. It really, really is. Yeah. So there we go. And these are just mini mini ice cream cones, kind you use for a baby. Fancy. Let's put something in it, Max. And the clock loves to forage out of the bottle. Right, Max. about that. So, I, you know, Mango's just thrilled with his new cage, so. Um, let's trust Mary. Anytime you put up something big like a big cage or a big piece of furniture, there's always a small sacrifice. Uh, Bruce right there. I gave myself that one popping the top on. Had my arm just a little bit too close and snapped into place and it tried to pinch me. Yeah. Oh, I know, Mango. I know. You're happy, happy. Hey, Carl, do you want to come out now? Do you want to come back out? Let's go. Let me just do a quick swing over here, Tico. So you need a big mask. What the hell are you doing making such a mask? Yeah. Look at that mask. Oh, this is big, Mango. Oh, Mango, you're the one who just got my mode earlier. I know you'll take a turn. Right there, you're a little too excited. Nico! Yeah, that's a big perch. Good job. Good job, Good job, Pico! Good job, Pico! 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 Now, Pico's going to enjoy him too. Aren't you, buddy? Yeah, look at that. Let me go get you some, Pico. Okay, Max, I'm going to reuse your cone because you still have the cone there. Okay, 
Nico, you drop this. Here. Colin wasn't very good to you, was it? Try again. Nico! Look what I have. I have Jack and Jack. Here, Nico, do you want snack? That's what I got. Is that good? Oh, is that easy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't drop it, hon. Don't drop it. I know, Mango. Was that good, Matt? Did you enjoy it? Really good job. Enjoy. You want a bite of organic sweet corn? Yeah? Get you a bit of that. Okay. I'm going to put it into a bowl or a hot powder. Turns out to a little bit of a mushy one. Just organic sweet corn. The puree and the ingredients of it are very simple organic sweet corn and water. So, quite good for them. And Mango really likes uh, having sauce on his food, so I've been making sauce with it. Yeah, it's the sauce, isn't it? Is that good? You want some? Huh. What's going on? Bite, bite. Say that 
is good. All the corns. Got some more stuff to mix in there. Okay. So would it be okay if I added a bit of rice to that? Got some rice, okay? Got, got some rice. I made rice yesterday for you. We'll come over and get you a few bites in a minute. There's rice in there now. You want a bite? Keep it a little bit more independent. Now, Mango really loves eating off of a spoon, and Max does not mind getting spoiled either. No? Okay. Eat a bit of this, and I've got a cup for mango as well. What do you think, Max? Is that good? Oh, yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah. That is good, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, you haven't eaten in at least a week. For you. Sorry, Max. Some mangoes. Hello, mango. Was this good stuff over here? Yeah. Well, we'll soon see later. Got a bite or two for right now. 
that was okay. Yeah. Go get it. Good job. Good job. Yeah, now Max has found the crunchies. Oh, we got some folks talking about different ways of making things with crochet and with knitting. Folks, we've got a question. Does anybody on here do quilting? The reason I'm asking is I'm thinking about making Max some more bandanas and all I need is are a few large quilting squares for that. I don't need a lot of fabric. Um, but yeah, if you do quilt and you've got a bit of a stash of some extra fabric and you want to mail Max a couple of pieces to make some bandanas with, message me on our, on our uh, website, www.maximalekin.com. Um, I think it's, you know, a couple of uh, pieces of fabric that are small enough to make a bandana for the boys would fit easily into, uh, you know, just a piece of letter mail. So if you are interested in doing that, you've got a little bit of extra fabric sitting around, message me. Don't need a lot, just need a couple of little tiny squares, which is... You know, I mean, I could go buy, but when I go buy, I end up buying a large, large piece of the fabric. And I just need a couple of little tiny squares. Right, Max? Yeah. Yeah. So just uh, send us a message if uh, that's something that you do and you've got a little bit of spare fabric. I know I way many, 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 many years ago, uh, I used to do some sewing. I did... Uh, quilt for one of my cousins, and I remember having all of this extra little bit quilted fabric left over. Um, you know, just the little squares and the little ends from all the fabric I bought for quilting. So I know that there's always scrap. Yeah, Max, so I used to do a lot of sewing. Yeah. Yeah. I think the most ambitious sewing project I ever did was a wedding dress many, many, many years ago when I got married in the 90s. Yeah, it was big, it had poofy sleeves. I mean, they, they thought they were fashionable in the 90s, leg and lesson sleeves, uh, something that takes uh, more fabric than you realize. Yeah, um, sure, not even a pack quarter. I mean, you know, a uh, piece that's uh, eight by eight by eight or something would even work well for a uh, bandana. I mean, the bandanas are not that big. Um, but I'm just going to walk over and grab Max, we've got a bandana here, don't we? So I'm just going to measure off the piece of fabric here that Max has for a bandana right now. This one is assembled. I mean, I can, do, I can sew and assemble or if somebody's willing to, I won't say no. But yeah, so this one is a bandana that works well for Max. So as you can see here, it's not even that big. And on the diagonal, let's just take a quick look here. Uh, on the diagonal, it is 7 inches. And then you'd, of course, need just a little bit to fold over and a little bit to thread that through. So it's a triangle. Uh, a square that is, let's call it 8 inches by 8 inches, that would give enough room for all of the seam allowances, would give plenty of fabric to do two bandanas. Mango, you can have a matching bandana. Um, but I mean, it's super, super simple, too. All you obviously have to do is finish the edges. And this one came from Avian Fashions. But, uh, and then just sew over a channel. And this one just has uh, some elastic cord. And I mean, I've got, I've got a bag of pony beads here. I've got elastic cord here. So, you know, I could even assemble if, uh, you know, if I could just get a little tiny bit of fabric. But, you know, that's why buying a fat cord or something, you know, what's, what's, what's that? Those, that's a lot of fabric. 
just seems like a bit of a waste. But, uh, yeah, just sort of a thought that just occurred to me as I was reading all the comments about our crafty folks. I mean, I, I could fill up not, it wouldn't take too long. It's just having some different, different uh, patterns of fabric, right, Matt? Yeah, yeah. question. She asks, has any of the birds that ever pulled a feather and been bleeding? So it's not unusual for a bird to break a feather. Uh, when feathers come in, for those of you who are not familiar with birds, and so I'm going to talk about feathers and give a bit of an anatomy lesson. I'm going to grab a feather for an example. When feathers come in, I mean, this, this is one of Chico's uh, flight feathers, and you can see, see that it's got this quill, quill bit on it right here. It sort of looks like, a, like you could make a feather pan out of it. Looks like a bit of a quill. Um, but this part of the quill, and I'm just going to assume that I'm in focus, I apologize if I'm not, it's hollow. And when the feather is growing in, it grows in in a bit of a feather shaft. And that shaft looks a lot like the aglet or the, that little plastic bait you have on the end of a shoelace or the cord that goes through a hood. Um, so it's a little bit hard when it grows in, and that's, that's the sleeve that we usually clean off of the bird as the feather comes in. So it's like feather's growing. There's actually an active blood supply. Up, Max. Up, up. Up, up. Max, do you not want to go up? Oh, you found something you dropped. Okay. But as the feather grows in, this portion of the feather has an active blood supply in it. And this is hollow. If the bird takes the fall and breaks it or something, and that snaps, it's sort of like a straw. And you've got an open blood supply. Now, that's called a blood feather when that feather's coming in. Perfectly natural, that's the way it's supposed to grow. But if something like that breaks off, the bird can generate an awful lot of blood, 
one broken blood feather, a bird gets excited and flaps their wings, the room they're in will look like it is a bloodbath from the Antibo Horror. Uh, yes, Max, I remember that happening once. But uh, if that happens, uh, usually the vet will just pull off this little bit of the shaft, they'll just pull it out and put a little bit of pressure while that uh, blood vessel uh, sort of heals itself off. But sometimes that can cause a bit of bleeding, and birds will sometimes, if they break off a feather, they'll sometimes pull that bit out themselves. Occasionally feathers will fall out, but still have a little bit of blood in here that maybe they weren't quite ready to fall out. But that can happen. So when is an emergency? The bird is losing any amount of blood, it's an emergency. If it's just uh, one drop and it's quit bleeding, not an emergency. Uh, we're going to wash our hands here, Max. Yeah. Now, if your bird is plucking, which is to say they're pulling out a bunch of feathers, there can be a number of different reasons for that. First thing to do if your bird starts plucking is go and visit your vet. Right, Max? Because then they can rule out if there's anything that's bugging the bird that is uh, health-wise. And that's the first uh, thing. It might also be behavioral, in which case talking to somebody like Robin from Herod SOS can sometimes help. But she'll tell you the same thing I'm telling you. If your bird starts fucking, go see a vet. Now there's a big difference for those new bird owners out there between fucking and molting. In the course of the year, every bird loses their feathers and grows new ones. Um, it's just constant. I mean, feathers are constantly growing in. They lose one feather, they grow in another one. Usually it's a feather from here, a feather from there. Sometimes they look a little scruffy, they look like little pin cushions because they've got so many new feathers coming in. But that's not, uh, that's not a problem. That is natural. One thing I had Tico do one night, and this was a couple of years ago, he had a night fright. Um, I just heard him get super excited in his cage, and Max was super excited, and I came running down to see what was going on. And Tico had been flopping, and he told him on to the edge of his cage, looking at me as if to say, what the heck happened? Uh, he was kind of scared, he came out for a cuddle, I reassured him everything was okay, and I looked in his cage. He dropped all of the all of the flight feathers from one wing. They were all on the bottom of his cage. Now and I'm looking, going, that was dumb. Um, you know, in an emergency, birds can actually drop feathers. It's something that is a little bit bizarre. Uh, they can drop flight feathers, or they can drop tail feathers. Usually if the bird drops feathers like that, they'll be, you'll just have a whole series of feathers down in the cage. There won't be any blood associated. Bird's not fucking. You don't see anything before. You don't see anything afterwards. It's just totally, totally bizarre. But I think what happens in the wild, if the bird thinks that something is grabbed onto their wing or their tail, they'll just drop those feathers. Uh, they'll just release those feathers so they can fly away. Um, Tikal has done it before to Sheila. Um, it scared the living Jesus out of uh, Sheila when it happened. Uh, you know, but something that scared him. case of Pico doing it, I was just baffled because how much is a successful coping mechanism to drop the top of your feathers so you can't fly? I mean, I suppose if somebody's holding on to them in their, in their mouth, uh, you know, you leave them with a mouthful of feathers and you get away, but uh, yeah. You know, Pico regrew his feathers. He looked a little lopsided for a bit. He looked a little miffed for a bit. Uh, but yeah. So many different things can happen with feathers, right, Pico? Yeah, right. So, Max, I'm going to check comments. That was a really good question. And then maybe we can play a couple of games. Um, you want to play some birdie games? I know. Let's go play some birdie games. Let's see what games you want to play. Bird love? Just ah. need the comments.
mind, I'm okay as long as I can feed my birds and squirrels. And I hate to say, Karen, I misread that first idea. And I read, I'm okay as long as I can feed my birds squirrels. And I'm thinking squirrels aren't very healthy for birds. <laughs> oh my goodness. What are you doing, Max? What are you doing? Very happy to actually be back home. Yeah, now some birds do pluck. Absolutely. Some of our friends' birds do pluck. Uh, Einstein is a great example. He decided uh, a few years ago that he wanted to have a bear chest. Um, I guess he lived in Texas. It's kind of warm there. Uh, his people took him to the vet. They had a number of tests run, they talked to behavioralists, they did everything possible. But I thought just prefer that. It's not unusual. And what I just tell people is the birds are beautiful just the way that they are. Isn't that right, buddy? Yeah. So Matt, would you like to play some games? Do you want to play some games? I need to put down some paper. Let me go get some paper to put down. So we can play some games. Now, let's get some paper. We'll do nicely. Okay, buddy. Um, so I need one more piece. One more piece. Here. Is that what you wanted? Okay. There you go, Mango. Now you go one to the piece too. So I'm just going to put that down because we dropped some food and I don't want any of our toys to get sticky. And what's happening here for toys? You want to catch one? You want to catch? Okay. That's a shoe. I'm going to chew on the shoe. That's okay. It's a supervised toy. Which one's the froggy? Can you catch the froggy? 
Yeah? That's the froggy. Okay. You lean towards it. And one more time. One more time. Where's the ball? Good job. You want to do another one? Where's the frog? Frog. Is that the frog? Part of the game? Okay. Show me the frog and I'll put them away. No, yep, we're tired of the game. How about I don't show you the frog and you put them away? It'll work. Can you catch? Yeah, catch and catch and toss. How about this one? Yeah, here's another one. Oh, it's got a string on it. It's harder to catch when there's string on it. There you go. Good job. Good job, good job. Let's see what else I've got here. How about these? I'm to grab a couple of these, okay? Oh, sorry, Pico, I dropped that on the floor. You want to play? Can you catch some rings? Can you catch some ringy beanies? really want to toss them over there, huh? You, you know, Max, I've got stuff over there right now. I've got Maggie's little cake sitting right there. So it's kind of in the way. How about a blue blue one? Yeah. Good job! Good job! You want to read a book? Got writing right here. Can you touch the wolf? Where's the wolf? You see the wolf? Red suspects a crooked plot. Granny, what big ears you've got. All the better to hear a lot. Now come and kiss your granny. Where is the wolf? Can you touch the wolf? No, you're not in the mood to read? Okay. Not in the mood to read. You want to catch? Catch, catch? Okay. Let's see what else we got to play. Um, how about that? Flying. That one went flying. What's this? How about that? How about a yellow hoop? A yellow hoop. That's right. That's right. Okay. You're not super excited about that game right now. It's okay. Okay. Now take a towel roll. Why don't we play paper towel roll for a few minutes then? Okay. Good job.
the bank with that. I'm just uh, going over here to check on comments. Hey, Carl, what are you doing? Mask and soap. Okay, Pico, you can go there. Oh, Carrie's asking some news about our mask puppy. So we've seen uh, the first sample. And we had a few changes that we, weren't, that we weren't super happy about, so we've requested those changes. And once we've made those changes, they're going to send us a copy of the plushie that we can show you. And that's the point when we approve that, that's when orders open up. But it is designed. We are incredibly excited by it. Um, there's a link in the description on YouTube on how to order, and if you message us from Facebook, we'll get you that link as well. Um, now, ordering right now, pre-ordering, all you can do is sign up for the notifications, and then as soon as the pre-orders open up, we're going to let you know about it, right, Mac? Um, there's going to be something extra, extra special about it. And I can't tell you what that is yet uh, until you see it. I want that to be a big, big, big surprise. I know what it is. Yeah, you know what it is too, right, Max? Because we talked about it. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. So, Max, climb up. Climb, climb. Climb up, honey. Climb up. Max, you want one more piece of this? I know. I know. You're full of beans right now. There you go. Okay. All right. So that's the answer to that question. Yeah, we are really excited about the Max Plushy. Uh, Raven Kane, thank you for sharing the link. Max to the luck in Um, Super, super exciting. Super, super exciting. Oh, you, you're mumbling, mumbling, huh? Okay, I'm just going to pin that uh, comment. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Sharon. Yeah, it is going to be absolutely adorable, Susan. It's going to be a limited edition. It's going to be super, 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 super special. And I cannot wait to show you the special feature that it has. Um, our friend Einstein, when they did their plushie, Einstein's plushie uh, talk. Actually, we've got Einstein's plushie right there. Um, these ones are no longer available, but when our friend Einstein did his plushie, same company that we're doing. But that one was Einstein's plushie. Super, super cool, talking. Now, ours does not talk, but it has something else that is an extra, extra special feature. So I can't wait to show everybody. Yeah. Yeah, it is very, very cool. But uh, they're not available yet. They're still at, ours are still at the factory. Uh, they're still uh, finishing off the design and getting everything ready to go. But yeah, we'll let you know as soon as that's available. Yeah, Angie was saying she was blessed with her Einstein plushie that was given to her for Christmas. Yeah. No, it, uh, we, you know, we want it to be absolutely perfect. And, you know, this is not unusual. This is normal. You know, you announce it. You let people know it's coming. You start the design work on it. 
And it takes a bit of time to get everything uh, designed and you go back and forth. And it takes a bit of time to get the sample and have it perfect. And, you know, it's, it is a big process. But it is so important to have it done right. And, you know, it's not just here's a plushie, we're going to put Max's name on it. It is Max as a plushie. It's a bit of a difference there, right, Max? Yeah. Mango's going to be so jealous. <laughs> yeah, but Max, you are so happy with that crunchy, crunchy pasta. Hey, we're waiting too, Susan. So Max is just going to have a little bit of a munchie. I don't think we're going to have Mango on the stream right now because he is in his bucket having a lot of fun. Um, he's got this big blue bucket and he likes to play with his wooden blocks in there. And he took a bit of paper in there too. And I was getting Max uh, some paper to cover up before we start playing with some toys. Um, on the catch tray, uh, Mango uh, ran over and asked him for a piece of paper, so he took that into his bucket, and I'm not quite sure what he's doing in there, but he is having a lot of fun, so right now he's super excited about that being inside of his cage, so what we'll do with uh, Mango, we'll probably have him out next week. And I'll ask him if he wants to do a cage tour, and we'll uh, do a video of that, but it's only if he's okay with it. Hi, Anne-Marie. My goodness, you're being noisy, Max. What is going on? What is going on, huh? Oh, Max, I got another toy for you. Let me, let me get it. Let me get your toy. Boy, Max, do you know how many of these we have in the house right now? I went shopping. Looking looking at the paper good aisle, and I went, oh, that's right. I need toilet paper. 
and I need Kleenex. So I bought, and I, I mean, I buy bulk. I bought 12 boxes of Kleenex, and I bought, uh, what's that one, 18 rolls of toilet paper. So I get them home, and I've got a couple of, I think I was think down to my last box of uh, toilet paper upstairs, or my last box of Kleenex. I've got a few things of toilet paper. So I thought, oh, I'll just put these downstairs until I need them. So I took them downstairs to put them into the storage area, and I looked at the shelf where they belonged, and I went, there's already 18 rolls of toilet paper, and lots and lots of boxes of Kleenex. Apparently I cannot count, and I should have looked before shopping. So we got, we got a lifetime supply, right? Yeah, we got a lifetime supply. But I mean it's better to have than not have, right? Goodness, man, what are you doing? You gonna help? Yeah, but you can make toys with a lot of things around the house. Is that a fun game? Max, where's your, where's your box? Show me your box. Where's your box box? You know, it's a lot more fun to play with when I'm holding it. What do you think, Max? Chuck, 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 chuck. Mango chuckin? Good job, Max. Good job. Right now, Max. Okay, folks, I think that's going to be about it for our Saturday stream. Oh, Charles is on. Hello, Charles. Yeah, Charles Mango's busy playing in his bucket right now. He's having a lot of fun. Song. Listen to Mango. Mango's smart. He's got a very pretty song. The other thing you can do with the Kleenex boxes is stuff them with stuff. Uh, put a few treats in, maybe a couple of nuts. Put a few foot toys that are safe for the birds to play with. Stuff with a bit of paper and it becomes a foraging toy, right, Tico? Yeah, you like that, don't you, Tico? Oh, Tico, I know. Tico's giving a look at that box and he's saying, hey, I think I might like that. So, what do you think, Max? Did you have fun? Yeah, you had fun. You had fun. Oh, my bird nest. Oh, my bird nest. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying I think we'll call that a day. I want to thank everybody for joining the stream. I want to thank Tango for the super chat and all of our friends on Stacy, Susan, and other friends who the stars. We'll go say thank you to the star senders independently as well. 
But yeah, it's super, super cool to hear from everybody. Yeah, um, you are so right. You gotta keep those beats occupied. Okay, Max, that's enough yelling. You gotta be quiet. Quiet. Max, can you listen to Tico? He told you that you should whisper. Whisper. 